Punisera. Now, does it bother me? Well, not really. I mean, there isn't much I can do about it anyway. And I'm not like Barb. Barb, who she used to get absolutely furious. My God, she would call press, press conferences with newspapers in this country or that country, screaming, how dare you do an interview with Mario Bava? How dare you talk about Mario Bava without talking about Christopher, without talking about me, without allowing me to do an interview? And she even won a court case on that to where they had to interview her. And, you know, some of that stuff just was really hard dealing with back then. And dealing with it now is almost even harder. But any time it really starts bothering me is when I start thinking about what Dario Argento said to me. And he said, Christopher, sometimes to make great art happen, you have to make even greater sacrifices. And he's right. He's absolutely right. You know, I mean, I'm never going to say anything directly against them because you have to actually ask the question, without them, would the world today even know who Maria Baba was? And for that, you have to actually thank them for what they did. You can't necessarily condone some of it, but you have to actually thank them for what they did because they made everyone realize who he was. Now, Mario Bava was the sweetest, kindest, most loving individual I have ever known in my life. Funny, hilarious, stupid silly. I mean, really, really silly. And the man was just amazing. And the things he could do were beyond comprehension. But, you know, he was plagued with problems and setbacks, disappointments, and he had a lot of problems. And he made a lot of bad decisions because of that. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the group that he went to to become famous. Okay? He hired a group of publicists, publishers, um, uh, film historians, etc. And they brought Mario Bava to the world. They didn't technically do it right, but they brought him to the world. And that's all we care about. We as cast members, we as production crew. The only thing we care about is that today, you know who he is. If you were to talk with uh, Barbara Steele and I back on the set, sitting in an Italian castle on a Victorian bed talking all those years ago, we were sitting there going, you know, I don't care. I don't care if this film doesn't work at all. I don't care if it's never seen. I don't even care if it's in a theater. Just so long as that old man gets to play with his makeup, gets to play with his cameras, gets to do the film that everyone told him he could not do just so he could finally have his dream happen. And that was all that mattered to us. And if you had asked us back then, that people would be talking about Black Sunday 20, 30, 40 years later, we would ask what planet you were from. We literally would. I mean, you know, but, and no, no one was more floored than her and I when we got awarded for it. You know, I mean, my God. When I got a, a Golden Mars Award for Best Supporting Actor, when Barbara Steele got a Silver Venus Award for Best Actress in Black Sunday, we were absolutely stunned. We were petrified beyond belief. You know, this, these were our first awards. This was our first film together. And to have it just rocket like that was unbelievable. But... You know, that, that's part of it all. Now, the problem was, this group was part of a group that was international, that wanted to say that politics didn't exist. Politics in film doesn't work. 
So no one wants to know about the politics. Everyone wants to, wants to forget the news. Everyone wants to forget politics. So let's just talk about film. And that's what this group is. And that's what they still are. My biggest problem with it is, I'm sorry, I don't care if you were capable of reading newsprint, if you were capable of listening to a radio, watching a television, and you were alive prior to 1980, you know what happened. You know what, what's happening in the world, okay? And to try and sit there and say, well, this film was done in Italy in 1974 when the entire world knows it could not have been filmed in that year. You know, in England, there's actually a support group for Hammer Studio fans in which they ask fans to come to them and to report problems with them because they want to stand up. They want to take a stand and scream every time some stupid idiot tries to tell you what year you saw that film in that theater, what year you were sitting in the theater watching it, and so on and so forth. I mean, my God, some of this is just blown to insanity proportions. And all because they want to say that the copyright date was when the film was made. And that's the stupidest damn thing on earth because no one is going to buy it. Americans aren't going to stand for it. The British aren't going to stand for it. And, you know, it's just stupid. I don't even know how they get away with what they do. But that's where I come in when I sit there and when people talk to me about film, when I talk about film, I go, no, this is real. This is life. This is what really happened in the world. Okay? And that's where I have a lot of problems with these people, but they don't want to talk to me anyway. So, and that wasn't really the big problem, but that was part of the problem. Now, the big industrial problem was on a film called Planet of the Vampires. I was sitting in the makeup chair and Mario Bava was applying another layer of uh, latex to my face. And um, this man comes in and he says, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was interrupting shooting. And Mario says, turns, looks at him and says, I'm sorry, I can't deal with you today. And he says, well, what would be a good time? And he says, I'll have to call you. I am book solid with him right now. I have no clue when I'm going to be done. And he said, okay. And he left. But not before seeing the sculpture sitting on the set. Now, I forget to this day <clears throat> if he leaked it before the production actually finished or if he said it after the production. But the problem was he created a story around a sculpture sitting on the set. A story that Mario Baba created this wonderful story and Ridley Scott must have been inspired by Mario Baba's Planet of the Vampires. He still tells this story even today. <clears throat> okay? Now this caused immense problems. Okay? All of a sudden, bam! Phone rings. Ridley Scott's on the phone. Whoa, wait, wait, Ridley! Whoa, wait, wait, huh? And he's screaming at me, you were just an extra in my film uh, Legend and so on and so on. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Let's find out what's going on. So we actually sat down and we figured out everything. And the problem was the sculpture on the set was actually crafted by H.R.R. Geiger. It was a signed original Geiger sculpture. And the only way I could smooth waters was because of that. And I talked with him, he talked with Geiger himself, and the four of us sat down and we had a conversation. We created sort of a, a truce in this whole problem. Because obviously, you know, we're make, we're still in production in the film in 19... 8384 and yeah it was copyrighted in 70 something who cares but we were still in the production of the damn thing and obviously alien had been done years ago and so that's when we were all sitting there going mm -hmm. and that's been a very bad point in the whole publicity stunt that's been going on for years and it's been a sore point in England I'm sure but 
the thing that I always remember with everything is everyone knows who Baba is today. And I am thankful for that. And in other words, in everything else, to make great art happen, you have to make greater sacrifices.